In our previous video, we have seen the configuration of the properties provided within the roles, namely required and the logic. In this video, let's try to understand the different policy types that the key cloak provides. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this policy for this REST API. So let's delete this. If we delete, even the permission for this policy will be deleted. This is done. The role for this REST API was the owner. Generally, we will have either one owner or more than one, maybe at max two to three co-owners. For that, I don't want to create role explicitly, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the specific user who has the access to this REST API. What I'm going to do is I'll select the user, update menu item policy, and the user was Amar. The logic will be positive and save. Let me create the permission as well since the permission was deleted for the previous one. The resource is update menu item resource, and the policy is update menu item policy. Save and Since Amar has the access, let's try to log in using Amar. Amar and client ID is this client secret. This authorize and let's see if this is accessible. Yeah, for Amar, this REST API is accessible because the configuration we had here was specific to Amar. This one. And let's try to log in using Suresh and see if this works as expected. Suresh, I'm not going to change again and again the price. We'll just see the REST API's response here. So Suresh has no access to this REST API. So this was the user's policy type. So let us suppose that the restaurant is owned by three people and I don't want to add those over here. Instead, I want to create a group for them and those users will be added to that specific group. Let me create a group here. New group, co-owner and create the group. And within this group, I want to have three members, Amar, Akbar, and Anthony. So these three are the co-owners. And within this role, authorization, I'm going to recreate this, delete, and create a new policy for group. Group claim. No, I don't want to add any claim. And groups. This is my group that was created recently. This group contains three users, Amar, Akbar, and Anthony. And you'll see here extend to children. Since this group doesn't have any children, it is disabled. We'll see that as well in a while. Let me save this. Let's create the permission for this policy. The resource is this and policy is this. Save. Let's try to log in using Amar. Amar and Secute. So he has the access. Similarly, Akbar also has the access. And even Anthony. So all of these three users have the access. Let's try with Suresh. Suresh. So Suresh doesn't have access because he's not a co-owner. Now what I want to do is I want to go to the groups and within this co-owner group, I want to create a child group. Co-owner two, create this and within this co-owner two, I am adding Suresh here. 
does Suresh get the access now? Let's see. I think already we have Suresh here. He doesn't have the access. Can see Suresh was logged in. So for this, what we have in the client's configuration is here in the policy, we already saw this extend to children. What I'm going to do is I'll just click this checkbox and save. Now, Suresh will get the access. There you go. So this was for groups and in all of these policies, logic works the way it was working in the roles configuration. Let me delete this again. The permission will also be deleted create a policy we have seen user we have seen role already and the group let's go for the regex but before going to the regex what i'm going to do is within this users for user like amar i'm adding a property attribute called test field this test field value will be owner save and for Suresh as well, what I'm going to do is I'll add this test field and the value will be manager, something like this. Save. To send those attributes in the access token, we need to add that in our client scopes. You might already have seen these configurations before. Here I'm going to go add by configuration and i'm going to add a user attribute the attribute name is test field the name same thing token claim name and it will be a string and i want this field to be added to the access token and hence i'm going to switch this on and save so once this is saved we have a field called test field and it has the value owner for Amar and manager for Suresh. Now let's go to this configuration here in the authorization policies. I'm going to create a new policy for regex. So target claim is test field because we created this field and in our configuration in the client scope mapper was also test field and the value for this field should be something like owner what i'm going to do is i'm giving here a regex own dot star save this policy regex policy and add the permission here this is my resource and this is my policy save let's log in using amar amar authorize and if i just hit so it works because let's see this access token paste so you'll see test field is going within the access token and the value is owner this rest api has worked for ama because the value in the test field was owner and our configuration in the policies for regex was own dot star in a sense it starts with owen and dot anything after that if i log in using suresh authorize then it doesn't work this is because access token although has this property the value for that property is manager and this fails because the value doesn't match in the regex pattern this was the regex policy let me delete this again and we'll see another one with time based configuration let me select this time giving the same policy name and i think the quarkus version which i'm using is a bit buggy for the property not repeat because i think it is 
trying to save these properties fields as well and it gives the number format exception whenever you are trying to invoke the resources so what i'm going to do is i'll just configure the repeat configuration here today's date is 18th june 23 and time is around 49 what i'm going to do is i'll add the configuration for 52 so month is 6 and you need to specify the month from and to so this configuration works between these two months and day is 18 i want to put it only for this day hour 13:52 so 13 from 13 to 13 to 54 just for the testing purpose and the start and end time the same thing i'm going to give you 13 54 save so the permission as well this and policy so let me log out and log in using sagar let me first show you sagar doesn't have any role here it doesn't have any explicit role and even though he doesn't have any explicit role he can access this rest api between this time period let me just execute it says forbidden and the reason behind that is the time is still 1351 and our configuration was for 1352 so once we have this 1352 this rest api will be accessible now that the time is 1352 let me see execute now sagar has the access to this rest api not only sagar every authenticated user will have the access to this rest api between this time period so one of the use case for this kind of configuration would be you might be asked to submit certain application only between certain time period and once this time starts you will be able to access those rest apis or you will be able to submit the application and once this time expires you won't be able to submit any application we'll wait for 1354 to hit the clock now that the time is 1354 let's try to access this rest api it says forbidden because the time has passed 1354 before 1354 you had the access to this rest api now since the time has expired you will not be able to access the rest api anymore all right we also have other policy types if you see here so these are very generic and i'm not going to cover those here so that's it for this video thanks for watching